Okay, I was really surprised at the response I got when I uh, did the first podcast. Um, I did not expect to get as many views as it did. I did not expect as many comments as it got. So, um, a little bit of an update of what's going on in my life right now. Um, I got told today that I'm probably going to be working on overtime over the next couple of days. Um, that's kind of the reason I wanted to go ahead and do this one because, um, yeah, I'm kind of tired. It's, it's the holidays and stuff like that, but at the same time, I do not know when I'll be able to sit down and be able to do something this long for again. Um, so, like, especially over the next, like, up until Sunday, I'm not going to be able to do anything really long form until then. Um, so I get everything I done need I need to get done done today. So I decided to sit down and um, go ahead and check out the next podcast. Um, thanks to uh, SRC Hobbit for uh, mentioning, and it, it, actually not just uh, not just Hobbit, a lot of people have been. Um, letting me know where these things fall into light as far as the actual show goes. So I have a couple of things before I need to continue on that uh, I can watch before I really get into the next, uh, really get into the series. And I saw you still don't skip anything. Uh, this one, the next one, which is the one, the next podcast, which is what I'm really looking forward to because it covers my Doran's Angry Boys, and I really want to see what Doran's Angry Boys are up to. But with all that being said, um, I'm going to be trying to space things out a little bit because um, tonight's like literally probably the last time I'm going to be able to sit down and do something this long for uh, for the rest of the week. Uh, I'm probably going to be I'm probably going to be too wiped out to actually sit down and do something this long for later on. So uh, we're going to go ahead and watch this. The last podcast was good, but. It's like I said, one of the things about the White Scars is everybody that has ever talked to me about the White Scars says one thing. They are just boring as a chapter. I don't know why. Um, but they, for, for whatever reason, I just don't like them. But um, this covers The Last Church, which I'm thinking is part of the short story from Tales of Heresy. So we're going to watch it and find out. Here we go, guys. Warning. This video contains spoilers for The Last Church by Graham McNeil. I thought so. It is recommended you read or listen to it before going on. If not, you might miss out on important information like the color of uh, your eyes, pants, or whatever. Thank you. Citizens of the Imperial Palace and beyond, this Voxcast Public A is designated Alpha Prioris. Continue your operations, but listen well to this very important announcement. Thought for the day, use your two Emperor-given ears to listen. To listen using any other organ is heresy! <laughs> okay. Overlord, Overlord. That works. Yes, you keep my throat in good condition. Let's be good. Oh, 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 oh. Always got the other Greetings, custodian there. Greetings, citizens. Welcome to this Voxcast public A, broadcast through Voxlink for the over 10 billion indentured servants in and around the phallic majesty of the Imperial Palace. This Voxcast is brought to you by the Cult Mechanicus of Mars, the Administratum, the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, as well as the Emperor's 10,000, the Adeptus Custodes, one of whom is I. As well as I. Salutations to you, loyal Emperor lovers across the entire Imperium. It is an honor to be here, speaking directly to you in the name of our glorious Overlord. Greetings! I, too, am among the rank and file of the Emperor's personal guard. A pleasure as always, dear listeners. I am not. 
I am an imperial fist. My wall name is adorable, and you shall refer to me as such. <laughs> Still don't entirely get why, but as you wish, Lord Adorable. Amongst us is also our Vox Heller Surf, whom we have named Boy. Say hello, Boy. Um, hi. This kid's back. I, I'm the Vox Heller Surf. I hold the Vox Heller. Uh, that's, that's my purpose. <sighs> Did you really have to introduce that thing? It's just here to hold the Vox Hailer. Mm. Anyone ever notice how pale the boy is? <laughs> yes. If we put oil on him, his fluorescent skin would probably make a good night light. Mm, like this. We are to enter the Sanctum Imperialis now, in which our father, the Emperor of Mankind, resides upon his throne. We shall then speak to him about a very peculiar record that his custodians unearthed during an operation into a so-called clown library. <laughs> <laughs> Primal fear. Do you mean a library that is a clown, or a library about clowns? <laughs> I don't need to explain anything about it! <laughs> Lord Adornable, please do not press it. Adornable. Oh, just like the record called The Hunt for Valdorius that we covered in our last boxcast, the events recorded within the pages of this tome are so specific that it is almost as if it was written by some creature of omnipotent knowledge. The only man I can imagine having written it would be the Emperor himself, but if not, I can probably speak for all of us when I say that we quite honestly would be terribly confused about its origins. I am, for whatever reason, barely up to speed with these recent events, but if we are going to speak to our Emperor, I am on it like a space wolf smelling the scent of dust. Oh yes, brother. It is high time we meet our Emperor. <coughs> Listeners, you can just sit back, relax, grab a bag of foam, and... Actually, never mind. Go back to working, you lazy nux. You shall only listen to this for the purpose of expanding work morale and attaining some context for why you still get to lead your sterile and fabulous lives. Especially after that whole rogue inquisition fiasco by Valdo. Stop yelling at our citizenry, Tribune. They may lead awful lives, but the least they deserve is due respect for fulfilling their purpose. I cannot hear you, Adorable! I am opening the gate! <laughs> Come, boy. Let us enter the Sanctum together. Uh, uh, t together? Uh, yes, uh, of course I will g keep up. I believe in you, boy. You can do this. My, my legs oh, are not made... Could you stop breathing, Surf? Your mere presence is drastically decreasing the quality of our Voxcast! <laughs> I can't help it. We should such a look kid. into getting some cybernetic replacements for those lungs of his. Would probably quiet him down. Master Lord Emperor Man! Hutch, what? Oh, how are you doing, mm. my glorious overlord? <sighs> a lot worse now that you are here. <laughs> Why have you come? Mm. Pardon our harsh and sudden intrusion, my master. We should have lubricated your person with knowledge of our entrance in beforehand. You are the absolute worst. Why <laughs> do you make your presence known to me in my time of mending? I am currently resting my broken psyche, but the tranquility required to do so is getting smashed almost half as badly as your hindquarters every blood games practice. Damn. We feel some information we have discovered may be relevant to your interests. If you give me this information without a singular terrible innuendo, I may consider listening to you. Oh, certainly. You see, I was thrusting forth through the bowels of that it. clone library. There's one hundred ten thousand. You could possibly be my biggest failure, and you are living proof that eugenics does not work. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. oh. <laughs> Hot damn. I'm starting to see why that priest threw himself into the fire. What did you just say? Mass <laughs> you are speaking to our emperor. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I was getting to that, my kid. I was reluctantly sliding around the hallways of that library uh, when I came across a section containing loads upon loads of imperial ejaculature. What are you talking about, you f***ing oil fat? Ow, f*** my ears. Why in the fuck is Roy and the Vox Haler here? I... I... We are broadcasting this conversation, father. We are doing a second Vox cast. <laughs> I'm so sorry.
If you wish me to remove him, I can break his neck and throw him out the window, my emperor. No need for more of boys in size covering my gleaming <laughs> floors. But why did you not tell me about the stupid Vox cast earlier? My psyche is not prepared for this hard a task. We figured that since you are in perpetual pain, the harrowing distress of suddenly being forced into an uncomfortable situation with billions of people listening would soon dissipate into the sea of agony you are experiencing every second. All right, I get it. No need to rub it in your mud chopped yellow jacket. <laughs> Rubbing things in is not my job. You have your custodians for that. <laughs> they don't need oh, your help, bro. Yes. Shut up and clarify why you decided this needed to be broadcast. As we were saying, sir, we found a section of the clown library filled with stories similar to that of the Hunt for Voldorius record that we covered last time. Dozens of written anecdotes containing such insight that it couldn't possibly have been recorded and written by an external figure. Yet, it seems likely they were. Sometimes these records are told from a first-person perspective, sometimes from a second or a third, but they all detail events of Imperial history to an extremely incisive and honestly uncanny degree. How do you know these records were not written by the ones to have experienced these events? Well, this could perhaps be the case, but if so, may I ask, have you ever written a story called the last church under the alias of uh, Graham Mac uh, not Nile <laughs> I love the way they do the names in this no that oh huh most interesting this is surprising if that is the case there is some form of mischief going on this would certainly sound all kinds riveting if it were not for that passive-aggressive reference you made about the priest and fire. Tell me the context of this before I devise manholes in a throne room floor by smashing you we through it. We, we shall, we, we shall, my master. <laughs> you see, our minds have been swallowed whole by this peculiar record. We have been lounging in its balmy insides and probed it of all its little secrets. You are the worst. Get to the point. This record is called Tales of Heresy. It claims to feature events recorded by peculiar figures such as uh, Dane Abne, Gave Thorpe, Graham McNeil, and Jemais Swallow, amongst others. For no doubt being. They're gonna make a swallow's joke. Carried by Eldar Chroniclers, these are highly peculiar names. <laughs> well, except the last one. Is it just me, or does the cover of that record have Angron on it? Uh, it would seem so, yes. <laughs> well, the highest form of irony is that I am fairly certain he never ever cared for the act of reading, or how letters function or how to hold things that cannot handle grip pressure of 2,000 kilograms per square centimeter. <laughs> he instead highly enjoyed watching sitcoms. What? Nevertheless, what does this record have to do with the martyred priest? I grow tired of you prolonging this. Fine. We want you to read this tome from page 275 and onwards. Throw it at me. Oh, as you wish, my emperor. Uh, here goes. You ready? Always. Is he just flicking through it? No. He is <laughs> reading it. I wish I knew how to read. Quiet, sir, if no one cares. Just don't hit me. Done. That was really fast. <laughs> of course it was. I am the mother booping emperor. <laughs> Ultra rapid read through. <laughs> that is a funny reference. Thank you, Robo. I don't get it. Thank you, Lord Adorable. I don't get it. So you want to have this, a very private and personal meeting, between me and the last priest, made public knowledge. The record is a good example of the Imperial truth put into action. It also allows us to shed some much needed light on the Age of Strength, and how you came to be the Emperor of Mankind. People really should just know this already. I cannot express to you lot how frustrating it is that I must waste my time reiterating the events of the past ten millennia. Boy, do you know what the Age of Strife is? Okay, seriously, I want to walk around talking just like Rogel. I want the same voice that this guy has. It's fucking incredible. I would, I would literally go into grocery stores and start asking them for where products were.
Just, just, just doing it to just sound like that is fucking crazy. No. No. Allow me to explain. Sit in my lap. There is much room. No need for you to stand, boy. No. Oh. I, I, I kind of like this. I don't get it. Tribune, switch this to a new segment. As you wish, Lord Adornable. <laughs> the last turn. He's a fucking idiot. Setting. Is it story time? Very good. I shall tell you the tale of the Age of Strife, as told by my father to me. And you, listeners, shall too hear the tale. It shall provide context for the record we are about to cover. For the events of The Last Church by Graham McNiel takes place towards the tail end of the Age of Strife, which you might also know as Old Night. It was the worst time to be a human on Terra, or Earth, as it was known at the time. Before the Age of Strife, humanity had reached the pinnacle of its progress in the fields of science and technology during the Age of Technology. As humanity conquered thousands of planets throughout the Milky Way galaxy, prospering for millennia, this era of expansion suddenly came to an end all too soon. A huge influx of mortals started developing psychic powers, becoming what is known as psychers. It had to happen sooner or later, but this was an absolutely atrocious time for these symptoms to start cropping up. With a sudden influx of psychers, a corrosive wave of insanity, possession, and warp storms came with it, making space travel practically impossible. Every planet functioned essentially as a kind of void net, pulling ships out of the warp and straight into hell. This isolated the settled planets from one another for millennia to come, giving massively way for a thousand haughty pocket empires to form, causing an age of segregation amongst mankind the likes of which has never been seen since. Not only that, but during the 23rd millennium, the technology that mankind had revered during the age of technology turned, as abominable intelligences called the Men of Iron rebelled against humanity in a cybernetic revolt. Huge wars spawning across all human worlds, starting what you might call the mechanicalism. See, that's the thing about it. We don't get a lot of... One of the great things about 40k and 30k... Um, is that a lot of the information that you have before the time of the emperor is just non-existent. There's just, um, there's not much known about it. And I love the fact that they never try to explain that. There's just some things that just are not explained at all. It's like when you start telling people about the Primarchs and you tell them, you know, okay, there were 20 Primarchs, but there's only 18 known. And somebody's like, where are the other two? Nobody knows. What were the names? Nobody knows. What happened to them? No one fucking knows this. Like, here's what you need to know. They made 20. We know about 18. The other two, we know nothing about at all. And I love that the, when they were writing the Horus Heresy, they dropped these tiny hints. Like, one line of dialogue will cover the fact that at some point the Imperium did, did encounter them. And at some point, a decision was made, and like at least one of them uh, had Lehman Russ sick on them. And we know this from lines of dialogue that were said, because when the wolves were sent after when the uh, when the Volca Fenrica was sent to Prospero, um, they were saying the wolves of Fenris will be unleashed again. So it wasn't the first time they had been set loose on a legion. The wars of the machine were a massive hassle to deal with, especially in combination with the Psyker hysteria that started cropping up around Millennium 22. The state of conflict went poorly for Terra. It was completely isolated by a huge inrush of warp storms, as usage of warp space to travel faster and light became dangerous and eventually an impossibility. And with Terra's over-reliance on technology to survive in the first place, this anarchy proved too much for its inhabitants as they spiraled into barbarism, superstition, and wanton slaughter. 
Terra's feeble governments eventually broke down completely, as the planet became or but a massive battlefield for techno-barbarian warlords. Thank you, Father. But, during this horrible time, there was yet hope. A great warlord stepped forth and started conquering the lands of Terra with extreme efficiency. This warlord became simply known as the Emperor. Itzy boy. Our Emperor, together with his army of genetically modified warriors, the Thunder Warriors, predecessors of the Space Marines, started the Unification Wars, conquering the lands of Terra. The Emperor fought and won these wars, and with mankind's new master made clear to the people of Terra, the story in question takes place between the end of the Age of Strife and the beginning of the Age of the Imperium. That is a nice and tight packet of information I concerning like the early history of mankind. What did you think of this story, boy? We don't deserve our emperor. <laughs> He's too great for us unworthy peoples. And and just to throw it out there, I've been thinking about doing more videos. If anybody wants to see me attempt a lore video, please put down in chat. Like, give me a topic. Because I'd love to do something like that. It might give me something to do in the meantime, you know what I mean? That is correct. You are a good boy, boy. Uh, thank you, my lord. <laughs> Brown noser. Are you fucking serious? Now, perhaps we should make a quick synopsis of the record in and of itself. I'd appreciate that. I have not even read the book. Not that I tend to read books, that's for serfs and lex mechanics. Provide a synopsis for this full-grown millennia-old man who cannot read. Hey, hey, I mean, I can read. Do not worry your flowing locks, brother mine. The record exists in audio format, too. <laughs> just, just <laughs> go ahead with the synopsis. <laughs> Most smashing. <clears throat> the Last Church. Summary. <laughs> The Lost Church introduces us to Uriah Olathair, the priest and guardian of the Church of the Lightning Stone, which is the titular Lost Church on Terra. He reminisces about how popular his church was once upon a time. His midnight church sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 his uh, midnight service drawing in loads of people due to the frightening wars of the outside world. Now it is not as popular as it once was. The church is empty, and he is alone, but not for long. As the old priest awaits his congregation in his lonesomeness, a single man enters his church. A stranger calling himself Revelation. It's you, boy. Again. Yes, that is it for the oh so spoiler free synopsis. So, wait, is. is Revelation our glorious overlord? I just said that but a moment ago. He's a fucking Two idiot. Ago, you figured it out. Took you about five hours less than I thought it would. Oh, thank you most graciously, my lord. Shall we go ahead and let loose our thoughts about the story, my master? Sure. Let us get to the nerdy gritty of what happens between us and the church. All right. Let us go. The cool thing is I read this. I Well, I didn't read. I, I heard the story not too long ago. The Lost Church Review So, this is the time when I can inform you that this is not an event typical of those recorded in that clown library. <laughs> These records have a tendency to contain at least one, often more, combat segments presented in incredibly grandiose fashions. Not a surprise considering the state of a galaxy at yes, large. Yes. A fine observation, my emperor. Yes. Fine indeed, but, but uh, this record is an exception. It is simply a dialogue between two people. A religious man of a simple mind led to his belief by personal experience, and a staunch unbeliever wielding cold logic as his weapon, yet is also laden with arrogance and prejudice. Not in What did you what? just say to me, you flaccid Creta? <laughs> oh. Yes, how dare you even think of articulating such... Uh, Non-correct uh, thoughts? I, I, I am sorry, my lord. <sighs> Honestly, he's just stating the truth. <laughs> oh, that is totally not so. 
Come on, as we established, you can't even read. <laughs> How would you know? I can't read! Oh, sure you can. You are such a nerd. <laughs> no, no, stop this humiliation immediately. Stroll along and lick your wounds while I continue. Uh, 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 I'll <laughs> lick your face. Oh, shut up right now. And move on. <clears throat> the arrogance and prejudice carried by revelation, wow. something his followers, like my brother over here, would have a hard time swallowing was established as harshly as can be only a few words into their dialogue when Revelation calls Uriah's kind, dour, and leaden-hearted, having assumed him to be of the very same nature. And this is only one of the many, many up-and-coming arguments Revelation slams the poor priest's aged rear with throughout this recorded event. His aged mind required his medicine, but he insensibly refused it up front. Even with limited space, an unyielding stubbornness, and, quite frankly, a whole lot of crap plugging it up, the medicine had to get in somehow. <laughs> Who's pulling in your endos out the endo now? Your endo is near if you do not cease, Vermin. Yeah, just stop being a jerk. <laughs> As I was about to say, though, <clears throat> Revelation's vindictive attitude, especially towards priests and religion in general, is made clear very fast, and Uriah proceeds to defend his belief as best he can as their argument flares up. But he is no theologian, he is simply a man of faith, so his worldview is slowly and painfully deconstructed by this strange man for reasons eventually made clear. A no doubt immensely interesting dialogue, one that sheds light on the Imperium's early history and the character of our Emperor. But a painfully one-sided conversation, it has to be said. Take heed, listeners, for these are the facts. The Imperium of Man is founded on the Imperial Truth. This is the verdict that all faiths and beliefs in the supernatural are to be gotten rid of. This was an integral part of the Unification Wars as well as the Great Crusade that I later started, reconquering the planets of the Milky Way galaxy much like I had conquered the countries of Terra. This record probably has one of the best demonstrations for how the Imperial Truth functions on a theoretical and practical level, Uriah Alaphair, and his craggy old church serving as the perfect representation of all whom rejected the new Imperium. It was the Imperial Truth that brought this Imperium to its height. Without it, all that would remain of you would be your ancestors' festering corpses, so shut up, boy! What? You are definitely not wrong. This is not... They've been giving him shit so much he's going after the boy. Not a case of arrogance. <sighs> it is a case of me being right versus mankind ripping out its own innards and willful wrongness. <sighs> All right. Time for the real talk. Sir, while I adore you like none other, while I would give my life to save yours in but an instant, while I would serve you for an eternity and more, while I am thankful for your graceful masterdom of our undeserving species, I have to admit that you are kind of an asshole. What? Oh. <laughs> what? You dare? You actually <laughs> dare? You madman! <laughs> I mean, all right, listen. The Age of Strife was quite awful for everyone alive at the time, and the religions of old no doubt penetrated the veil of morality more than enough to warrant not existing anymore. There is no denying that. But... Come on now. Are you some speck of a made man of all creatures in existence, really criticizing me right now? I have to agree that your actions were redundant, Oh, God. Father. All in all, what you did is you entered that church to have a heated argument with a harmless old mortal. Exactly my point. He was harmless. Quiet. He was 80 years old. Shut up. He was tired and lonesome. Shut your stupid mouth. His only company was a rock and a doomsday I clock. will show your plates to your skull. I am surprised he did not die of liver failure in the midst of the argument. The vibrations of your vocal cords immediately before I expand their mass and make you choke on them. <laughs> Emperor's pits. <laughs> Choking is a function that long since transcended. God Do not it. think I have argued with countless preachers of all different doctrines, for that is exactly what I did during those times. They all either fell into my ranks or onto their polished marble floors. What makes you believe Uriah Alafair was to be treated differently? I cannot rightly say. There is just something deep inside me, in my very core, telling me that 
that you were kind of an asshole. <laughs> he, 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 he just keeps on going. I will humor you. Which one of my actions during the course of this record would you call asshole -ish? Well, first off, you assumed him to be dour and leaden-hearted, like, as you said, all priestly folk are. Those are among your first words to him. Priests are prejudiced by nature. I do not see why I should not return the favor in kind. That is kind of an asshole thing to assume. Holy balls! <laughs> All right, this is highly unorthodox. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to throw him out the window, my lord? No utriful strength, prophylactic. Much as it is unusual for me to say this, I need his input so I can figure out how he, of all sentient life forms, has the gall to currently be criticizing me. Well, uh, while I do not wish to strap on the thong of the uh, demon's geez. advocate quite as tightly as my brother here, uh, you never told the Ecclesiarch Decius that he was dour and leaden-hearted. He and this erogenous dung top are honestly pretty useful, and I am certain you agree, considering you are still keeping them around and all. Just like Uriah, I gave him a second chance, but unlike Uriah, Decius did not decide to throw a fit right into an inferno. I think that might be because you didn't decide to light the Ecclesiarchal Palace on fire after converting him. That True. would be incredibly wasteful. The Ecclesiarchal Palace and all cathedrals at once house that wretched Imperial cult is to be dedicated to the galactical establishment of the new Imperial truth as well as the worship of mankind as a whole. Why did you not repurpose the Church of the Lightning Stone in a similar manner? By the time your Thunder Warriors lit the Church on fire, the old priest had been converted. You had already convinced him that his religion was nothing but falsehoods. As I said, some things, such as old churches, are better left forgotten. Gilliman would probably fight you on that. Yep. He likes his old cultural vestiges. I would brutally spank his behind as blue as his livery if he did. Right on! Lewd. No. Besides, <laughs> some old stone church would have had to make way for the factorums and scriptorums eventually anyway. No need to covet such pointless history, when we can favor progress instead. Oh, how soon we forget. Ignorance damns progress. That is what our glorious overlord said last Voxcast. I cannot help but feel that forcing this old church into the void of the forgotten is to deliberately enforce ignorance. I wasn't in the last Voxcast, so I didn't even hear him say that. We are currently bringing the so-so forgotten vestige of cultural history that you are attempting to defend up openly in a Voxcast public, eh? It was a different time, and different actions had to be taken for progress to occur. So you go eat your empty-headed church sympathizing blather between two loaves of dumb man drum <laughs> while I remain in the right, as I always do. So you would not burn this church down if it happened to exist today? I would. But I would not have people forget it. I would instead make it an example to all of what happens if you insult me by insisting on building some scraggly damn cult check on my planet. Oh yeah! Burn it! Burn it! Burn it all down! Burn it all down! Burn it all down! Yeah! It is quite the vendetta you carry. Nevertheless, I have a second point to make. Oh, please! No, go right ahead. I am ready to thoroughly debunk and viciously murder each stupid point you bring up against me. The second instance of assholishness <laughs> that really stood out to me was when you told of the atrocities his religions had wrought in the days of old, like those holy men who killed a whole bunch of people while, well, for the lack of a better term, crusading. Yes, his religion was awful, barbaric nonsense influenced by the gods of Coes. What of it? Hmm. Well, I just could not help but feel like your hypocrisy reached some form of climax no when shit. you told him the difference between the old crusades and your crusade. No shit. The difference is I know I am right. A perfect retort, my glorious overlord. You are right. Always. All the time. Shut up, boy. I didn't say anything. Why did you- <laughs> Even the boy's getting fed up with this shit. I wanted to pause it. One of my favorite parts in the early- uh, books of the horse heresy is when um, uh, there's an iterator and he's basically talking to a bunch of other iterators in front of a, um, a lunar wolf named Gariel Logan and um, he's talking about the this exact kind of thing why should people follow along with the imperial truth because 
it he says the Imperium should not try to do things the way they have been done, where um, my equals right, therefore my worldview is right. Um, it was one of the better parts of the... It basically talked about the philosophies of the Great Crusade as a whole. But, um, yeah, if you if you have not started reading these books, just go check them out. They're wonderful. You bring that up, butler boy. Are you really going to challenge me on this? No, perhaps not. But I am going to ask you why you did not just use your divine charisma upon his simple, mortal mind to convince him your crusade was justified. That way, he would have followed you no matter what. I did not wish for him to follow me blindly like he had done his false god. I wanted him to make the conscious, free choice of following me. Yes. In that case, <laughs> yes. you could have at least pitched the idea of humanity conquering the stars to him a bit better. Yeah. I mean, if you did not mention the whole crusade thing and told him he would get first-class seats on the Bucephalus as it traveled across the solar system for the first time, then maybe he would have followed you. He was clearly a traveler at heart, and spending his last days traveling a new frontier would have surely given him the peace he sought. Maybe you could have thrown in some liquor in the deal as well, I don't know. Are you then <laughs> suggesting I should have given this privilege to all preachers of Terra? Cause son, let me tell you how logistically screwed that suggestion is, and how logistically vacant your flopping skull is. <laughs> no, no. Just the ones you kind of liked, I guess. The ones with... potential. I do not follow. <laughs> 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 to be quite honest, you and you and I are got pretty... friendly at times. It was actually quite cute, and I'd totally ship that ship if it hadn't sunk already. What? <laughs> no. Well, to be fair, yes, he was admittedly all in all rather pleasant for a priest. And he gave me free liquor. <laughs> the only spirit you will ever believe in, eh? My second secret project has always been to awaken the immaterial god of alcoholic spirits. I would be amongst its most fervent followers. Oh. I cannot tell if this is some kind of joke. <laughs> What's an alcohol? Alas, I cannot deny that the novelty of having the last priest of the last church join the newly founded secular imperium would have been gratifying. If I had spoken to him more than once prior to his brainwashing, I am sure his statue would be mounted somewhere here on Terra. Whoa! Hello? <gasps> it's Death come to take me! Hello? Oh good! Yes, death, take boy! Hello. Calm down, boy. It is only a deranged tech priest. Hello. <laughs> uh, what do you want? Hello. Why does he have a Saurian for a face? From what? From, from where I was did wondering this creature that. emerge? I recognize this priest. Hello. He is supposed to be looking for my bike. Hello, 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 hello. A humble collector of knowledge may be beseeching your word. Would you believe I may have read this story through the pick feeds of your custodian's helmets? Would creeper. it be possible to now ask an obnoxious amount of questions about it? You are a creep, but okay. Uh... <laughs> the last church! Trivia time! May I commence questionnaire protocol 0001 now? Yes. What is an Europa? It is not to be confused with the ocean moon of Jupiter, as it is a Terran continent. It was called Europe before, but it is the future now. I thought that was an ancient Phoenician woman. I thought it was a band. <laughs> <laughs> what about Isandula Verona? What is that? Isandula Verona was an artist that lived about 11,000 years ago. She took commissions to paint frescoes, such as the one on the ceiling of the Church of the Lightning Stone. Four of her works mentioned in the record are the following. Number one, nude figures disporting in a magical garden. Number two, the explosion of stars. Number three, the battle between a golden knight and a silver dragon. <laughs> and number four, a wondrous being of light surrounded by a halo of machinery. The first one is a reference to an archaic book which spoke of the first two humans to ever exist, both of who lived in a magical garden where animals talked and everything was a trip. <laughs> that is dumb. Did you read it out of the book of the Astronomicon? <laughs> you shut your face. The book of the Astronomicon is a treasure. Hmm. Moving on, the second painting is more or less a hilarious J. Pon the Priest's expense, as it was an artistic representation of the Big Bang. 
I do not quite remember if it was Izanjula herself screwing around or if it was due to some so-called divine inspiration, but having a church decorated with a secular truth concerning the origins of existence, as opposed to one of divine creation is an insanely great prank. Does sound like something you would do. Boy, do you know what the Big Bang is? Uh, sounds really... lewd. Oh. Well, you know what? It actually does. <laughs> are you serious right now? I was warming up to boy, but now you are turning him to your side. <laughs> it was a widely accepted cosmological model for our universe, telling us that all that is began as a single, minuscule cluster of energy, which then expanded rapidly to the size it is today, in a fashion akin to that of an explosion. A bag that is big. How anyone in my Empyrean does not know this makes me lose so much hope for our future. How am I supposed to fight the heat death of the universe if no one even knows what a singularity is? A single what? Silence, sir! <laughs> Stop not knowing things! Cease, you think. Anyway, the third painting is just straight up me fighting a dragon. We'll not talk much more about it, but all mm -hmm. in all, I am a hero. Lastly, the fourth is a planted prophecy, that later goes fulfilled, as I descended upon Mars to greet the early Mechanicum. Uh, considering that is a thing, I cannot help but feel like it was either you who commissioned those paintings, or that Isangela Verona was some sort of psycho. Let us just say, that, in the end, her works were not really divinely inspired as much, as they were man-vinely inspired. Ha! Yeah. I'd prefer your man light and oh, God, any day it. of the week. She died after rejecting glory, honor, and exposure as adequate payment methods for her work. A total sellout, I am telling you. Oh, what a vile woman. Utterly. What is a Mariana Canyon? It is the remnants of the so-called Mariana Trench that existed back when Terra still had water. It was the deepest known part of the world's oceans. I have no idea what it is used for now, but I am certain that deep, gaping, and oh so convenient hole now holds mounds upon mounds of Terran excrete to thanks to whatever swivel eyed divisi or the administratum set to handle Terra's voided bowels. I could make a fine subterranean fortress out of it, if it was rinsed clean. What is a Frank? Frank was a country in Europe. It was primarily known for its production of striped shirts, the Napoleon Complex, <laughs> and the best fist of the North's tart oven history. I have heard its streets were filled with grayscaled clowns. <laughs> <laughs> what is an old knight? It is an other word for the age of strife, you idiot. How did you not know? That is quite dumb. Who are a sea twin and Gallienus? Some ancient, irrelevant scholars whom he just as well could have made up the names of on the spot. So these names are not based on some morbidly ancient yet still somehow relevant scholars from the early age of Terra as these usually are? No. Huh. <laughs> what is a Mediterranean dust bowl? After water on Terra magically disappoofed, so did the Mediterranean Sea, as it was called. It became, as the name indicates, a dust bowl. What are a Nordafric conclaves? Some society built upon the northern part of the continent known as Africa until the two latter letters were reckoned from history. Fairly certain there was a South Africa equivalent as well, but do not take my word on that. What is an... <laughs> what? Ersh was a nation led by a warlord known as Kaliganavarsh. His territory spanned areas previously known as Russia, Asia, and India for the most part, I am fairly certain. One second. All right, I had to go walk my asshole dog. Sitting back down. I hope you ask more, ask more questions about... Uh... <laughs> What about Shankar? What is A? A general under Kaligan of Ursh. <laughs> what? Goodness gracious, how what? Why does he say it like that? It is indeed a word, you inquisitive pile of trash. Who is Nathan Dern? 
Arvindun was the most infamous warlord of them all, the half insane, half genius, half sand enthusiast of the Pan Pacific Empire. His empire was incidentally only made possible due to the fact that the western portions of the Ring of Fire region disappeared. Wait, is it Nathan Doom or Nathan Derm? Both and neither, as befits someone who is somehow half insane and half genius. Good thing no one cares, he is incredibly dead and irrelevant. What is Tally? A pizza place. <laughs> and Scandia? A borksome nation of dumb idiot traders in what was once the kingdoms of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, before they decided to not accept unity, and thusly got dunked in flames by yours truly. And what about the Indonesian bloc? It is another nation, stop asking about nations, you vexing Don Holzer. <laughs> <laughs> what was the religion the priest held on to? Ostensibly an Abrahamic religion, as they were called. Or at least a descendant of one. Perhaps something along the lines of Catharsism, which is lightly touched upon in another record. Religious worship of a catheter seems highly ridiculous. It is no wonder you banned its worship, father. <laughs> Do you know, I was going to smack you for being wrong, but if you look at it with a deep understanding of esoteric philosophy, you are uncannily correct. Uh, explain, please. See, the, the urethra constitutes the brain, theism constitutes the damage, catheterization constitutes religious doctrine, and the flooding constitutes the awful bloody religious arguments pouring out from their skull. Oh, goodness. Honestly, wow. sir, that comparison was painfully oh, contrived. Yeah. Damaged urethras must have been common back in the day. <laughs> yes. This ancient sect first formed in the early days of the Age of Terra, at the very beginning of the calendar we conveniently hijacked off of them. It somehow managed to survive for thousands of years, like a stubborn disease, and crazily enough, it might just still exist to this day. It is brought into- I have received another delivery. So, my wife... She has made me more gingerbread. It is wonderful. It's decorated. Yay! Love you, babe. Love you, babe. You laid into the record when I revealed the history of this barbaric religion. I spoke of the ancient Crusades and its indoctrinated acolytes who spouted the asphalt and killed countless of innocents. I also referenced the events of the massacre of Bessier in ancient Frank, as well as, and prepare yourself for this one. The establishment of the Catharic Inquisition. <laughs> yes, you heard this correctly. There is an actual honest to fog reference to the very Inquisition <laughs> the one in the 41st millennium is so shamelessly trying to mirror. An organization that I myself call a dreadful, monstrous plague of hysteria in this record. Don't think I have ever heard of such an organization ever existing. I guess the name had to be derived from somewhere. Originality is dead. Suffice to say. When I later on ordered Malkador to form what would later be known as the God Emperor's Holy Inquisition, his intention was absolutely not to make a horrific planet murdering descendant of the 12th century organization going by the same name, and I will be knifed in the eye socket if that was his intention, and he is just screwing with me from beyond the grave. Could this be the last question? What was the Lightning Stone, really? Oh! Oh, I, I do not even think we provided context for the lightning stone in the first place. It is just a dumb stone that got hit by lightning. A blind and deaf man was supposedly nearby when it happened, and was cured, or something. It is really vague, and quite an awful, self-contradictory story dug straight from the contents of someone's catheter bag. <laughs> but the stone did exist, at least? Yes. The Lightning Stone is actually an ancient pinnacle of rock previously known as the Old Man of Store, before the little Lightning Stone fantasy came to fruition. It existed upon the Isle of Skye, which was part of an empire known as Great Britain in ancient times. How great was this Great Britain? Not that great. It was actually pretty small. Had a lot of pound lands though, so that goes for something. <laughs> I may or may not have any more questions, but... Might I be leaning towards no? I have no idea what compelled me to answer all of these questions. Can I break his neck? Not now. Oh, okay. Do I have a theory? Yes. The theory is... 
is the emperor of mankind, in fact, a giant asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are definitely going out the window. <laughs> Be gone, you rat. What is a frog? <laughs> now that that is done, do you know what I am going to do? What shall you do, my master? Oh my god. I am going to, for just a moment, acknowledge your piteous little wishes. Will I get to suckle your kneecaps? Oh, jeez. No, you will not. I shall summon forth Uriah from the depths of the Immaterium to speak to me once more. <laughs> A final dialogue that... between the two of us. Oh! 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 Shipping time! Oh, God. Wait, you can really do that? Of course I can. I am the Mother Stomping Emperor. Father. Are you certain this is a good idea? Yes, I came up with it. I shall locate his essence and project it here. Okay, I rewound that for like 10 seconds because right before he started to summon him, like I gotta add right then. So I'm gonna start it 10 seconds back. I shall locate his essence and project it here. <laughs> Our glorious overlord in such casual a fashion. Thrones trousers, what has uh, happened? Uh, oh, my, my, my apologies. Excuse me. You seem to have forcibly summoned me at a most inopportune time. I was just preaching the word of the gods to my congregation. Oh, no, 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 yes, no, yes, no, yes. Ah, no matter. Have you perhaps brought me here for a second round? I knew this day would come, you know. But I have to give you fair warning, however. For believe me, old friend, I now have not but the moral high ground, but also approximately 11,000 years of stone-cold fact to back up my faith. <laughs> Emperor's teeth is a coward, man! <laughs> oh, damn it. I have been unwittingly defending someone who is now a literal demon this entire Vox cast. Ah, oh, well, I have to go inject a Promethean cocktail into my face and get it turned into a dreadnought. I fight! Excuse me, but I have to first of all ask what in the grandest galactical gobsmashing fuck has happened to you, Uriah? Revelation happened. Are you sassing me right now? <laughs> he is sassing you right now. How <laughs> dare you sass the Spaspora of Spas... Sasper power Fuck! Saspera! Not as much sassing as I am perhaps thanking you. Albeit an indirect action, your crazed arrogance was what brought me to find the primordial truth through <sighs> baptism in the flames of Terra's last religious bastion. That is just wrong! I would contend that the self-immolation has had the opposite of its intended effects. After you stripped away my faith in both God and humanity, I thought I had lost it all. Nothing remained for me in this world. Nothing but despair, persecution, and loneliness in a new world bereft of its morality. The conflagration that had once been my church, I then saw as my only salvation. But in the midst of the inferno you had so ruthlessly started, I heard their voices. They called to me. They wanted to help me. They saw my faith not as tragic and fruitless, but as tenacious, honorable, sophisticated, and beautiful. They assured me my existence had purpose, that the life I led had not been a lie. 
and that they wished had not yet snuffed out. They truly did exist, and they saved my immortal soul and brought me to the heavens. For them, I remain to this day. I yet stand as the last true priest of terror in the name of the gods, and I will preach their word to all whom are willing to hear it. So, friends, would you care to join me for the midnight service? Oh, God. It's not midnight, it's noon, traitor! <laughs> I hate this. I hate everything about this. It's taking a huge dump over the entire being who was Uriah, and the record in and of itself. Why would anyone do this? It's it's awesome. Awesome. That's fine. fine, then. Into the fray once more. We shall joust with words, thrust, and parry one another's certainties with argument and counter-argument. Say what you will, and we will spar for a few minutes or so. I really do not have more time. That is my intention. I have other matters to attend to, but a few minutes I can spare. Did you two just quote your previous conversation almost verbatim? Shut up, Rogel. <laughs> Dad is busy. <laughs> I am adorable. I, you're really not. First off, making the transition from a belief that, while immensely hypocritical, primarily proclaims itself servants of love and prosperity of all mankind to a belief that praises literal, actual demons is so beyond logical reasoning it could be a religion in its own right. Demon is but a name you foolishly apply to them to manufacture pretext. You frame them as objectively evil, but in that same regard, I could call them angels. Oh no, he has actual arguments, run for cover! <laughs> you must be screwing with me now. Have you ever seen a blood letter? Yes, I am aware as to how they appear, but... Just look at this cube army marble druid. Oh, that's a picture of a blood letter. <laughs> yes, I am aware as to how they appear, but... Had it been 11,000 years earlier, and the sucker came for a visit, you would be voiding your bowels witnessing a literal Satan strolling through your church. This is all semantics. To be quite honest, I do not care for what the Neverborn might appear for you to be. What matters is what they are. Yes, and this nice young man would like you to distribute mandatory alms to the Church of Mega Satan by ripping out your jugular and pouring its contents into a mile wide goer lake. See? You're doing it again. You're framing them as objectively evil and leaving it at that. Something you have done since time immemorial. You frame things as harmful when it's a lot more nuanced. I am not framing anything. This is verbatim what blood letters <laughs> this do. Is true. It is even in their damn name. <sighs> the service of corn is a weapon not... they use is literally called <sighs> a help blade. Much like the poorest servants of the powers, you focus all too much on such petty things as names and exteriors. You forgot action. <laughs> I am vastly different in my own worship. The one I spread to the masses. I worship the powers undivided as a singular entity. I perceive the various powers as aspects of one vast benevolent being. I wish for myself and all life willing to give themselves to the purest form of devotion to the powers in its unadulterated whole, coming as close as can be to the true god of this existence. You cannot possibly believe those wretched cock muffins. Up there are somehow part of the same entity. Oh, hey, the word of cock isn't so <laughs> Can I not? I believe it makes sense. In what regard? They are part of the Immaterium as the Immaterium is part of them. They are all connected, integral parts of a full body. Well, the way I see it is that what we call coas gods are like malign growths on said body. They need to be removed, so the body as a whole stops destroying itself. Remove coas. That is quite ludicrous. Do you realize? Remove coas. No, no. If you were to, if you were to do that, remove then... coas. Listen here. That is not even how it's pronounced. Remove coas. Remove coas. Stop remove that coas. Remove coas. Like remove coas. Child. Remove coas. The remove coas. Remove coas. Child. Remove coas. 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 Stop it. Remove coas. Don't take me seriously. I will not be having this conversation anymore. Remember that one time when you were shipped a book that said, "Abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from what is strangled, and from blood." But then you fried your brain and began worship of all those 
those things instead. All right, listen here, you shrieking revenant. <laughs> I'm getting rather sick of all this horrid hypocrisy that you're heaving forth. But since you want to play that game so badly, let's go. <laughs> Priest is mad. First off, since you focus on such petty things as exteriors and namesakes, let me do the exact same thing. Let's see what happens. Hmm. So, let me think. You directly or indirectly <laughs> repopularized the usage of many, many words that I'm loving this. were previously almost exclusively used by, for, and with different religions, such as Crusade, church, cathedral, sanctum, prayers, sacred, holy, divine, chastity, litany, purity, faith, angels, halo, priest, prioress, canoness, martyr, cherub, chaplain, templar, cardinal, ecclesia, titan, saint, pilgrimage, blasphemy, corruption, the council of Nikea, the inquisition, and of course, heresy. Just to name a few, and here you are, sitting in your glimmering god couch, led up to by a giant reference to Stairway to Heaven, in a literal golden palace the size of a thousand landscapes, incense candles all over the place, and you dare call me a hypocrite. Damn. <laughs> Most of those were Lorgar's fault. You made Lorgar. He is a direct cause of your actions. Lorgar made himself follow the path of his own religion. In his own blindness and desperation, he sought what he couldn't find in Father. Precisely. He only became a religious nut because he was put on that irrational oratory of a planet Koshis by the Koas Creta. And you decided to still give him an entire legion and the power to spread his faith. Which, oh, was the belief that you were a god, by the way. Totally called that one. The fact that he recognized me as a god was entirely coincidental, and not my intention. <laughs> you, you ragged corpse. Every single <laughs> facet of your entire damnable imperium, from its looks to its methods to even its religious symbolism, is neither coincidental nor accidental. You have done all this on purpose, and now you seek to deflect blame onto those whom you support. Shut it. For God's sake, Revelation. Sanguinius literally has angel wings. How could you have accidentally done that? I believe those were caused by radiation on his homeworld. Radiation does not cause anyone to grow angel wings if they were not genetically predisposed to. Was it not you who- The Emperor's getting his ass whipped. Badly. <laughs> Just said, stop focusing on petty things such as names and exteriors. And that is exactly my point, you sanctimonious ass. Even as you began coating your Imperium with religious iconography and naming conventions, you still spread your horrid Imperial truth, longing for a galaxy of secular superiority. Ooh, look at me, I'm so rational. Ugh. Even while claiming to have the moral high ground, and that religion is and always will be a source of destruction and despair, you go on literal crusades, killing billions who do not consent to your enforced belief system. Your imperial truth has killed more people than any religion in the history of man. The difference is, I know I am right. Fuck you! And also, I wasn't done. He just keeps on going. It keeps getting worse. While you revel in this grand display of abhorrent pietism, the primordial truth too contradicts itself, but in the right way. In that, while it may seem to you like the incarnation of objective evil, it actually brings forth purpose for humanity. Pride, hope, relish, bravery, and all dreams and emotions of mankind are praised to their highest regard. Beneath the rugged exterior of the powers, you find goodness in the heart of men. Beneath the deliberately hollowed exterior of your imperial truth, you find but a fruitless existence. The supposed purpose you speak of is but an awful excuse to ever revel in your ultimately inessential feelings. 
as multi-dimensional intelligences suckle from your naive brain teat. Your purpose is to be a host to parasites, that is no life worthy of existence. A true purpose would be not to comply to an astral oppressor, but to make a mark against its tyranny. Ascend your primal mind and become something greater than a mere god. Conquer the coatic parasite infesting your brain and retake it with an iron hand. And again, your words are riddled with hypocrisy. If you stood fully behind your own words, you would have accepted the interlegionary wars for what they were. The Primarchs themselves marching against tyranny. Your tyranny! No matter how much you may think so, there is a key difference between me and the tyranny of the Coas gods. <sighs> the differences. Oh, good lord. I know I am right. Can <laughs> you even give a reason for why that is? Of course I can. What is your reason then? Simple. I want to sustain humanity. The Coas gods only want to sustain themselves. Oh, that's dung if I ever heard it. You wish to sustain humanity? Fine. But to what end? All that I have ever seen is men and women slaving their lives away in squalor to perpetuate their betters. Their betters being you. No. Blows. The gods need you and your pitiful, unstable emotions to exist in the first place. I made the Imperium so that mankind may thrive away from these base emotional predations. Since, do you know, gods like corn really just want their blood. And just like how they need us, we need them. Just as how the gods are our thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Our thoughts, feelings, and emotions are the gods. We cannot exist without them. What makes up our beings are our minds, and without emotion, without thought, and without feeling, we would be not but truly non-functional servitor meat. The gods have existed since time immemorial, born with the first vestige of a thought. The powers want to sustain themselves as much as they want to sustain us. For we are one and the same. You are in dire need of a <laughs> fact check with all the sun source sewage you are spewing. The malevolent sentiences you know as the powers could not even help you make a god's damn sandwich. They are tumors that have grown from the horrid emotional instability of a galaxy at constant work. If these consciousnesses were to be put out and freed of sentience, it would make no difference for the ones not woven up in their crooked pyramid schemes. As I told you, the gods that make up the whole of the powers undivided have existed since the very first conceived thought. They this is like a, this is really good. I'm really liking they this. They are interchangeable with our emotions. They cannot just be put out without all sentient life in the galaxy going out with them. Whether you like that or not is irrelevant. The fact of the matter is that this pyramid scheme you are talking about is simply what we normal people would call being human. Please define normal people. <laughs> I can honestly understand why your sons betrayed you. Low blow. With this callous attitude of yours, it's only gotten worse with the years. You do not want to sustain humanity. You want humanity purged of all the flaws you see in it. You do not fight for humanity, you hate humanity, and you want it changed into something distinctly non-human. You want an enforced belief to replace free thinking. You want obedience to replace mutual companionships. You want the lives of your people to be dedicated to nothing but servitude to your malicious, <laughs> self-serving cause. And oh my! How painfully ironic it is that I tell you all this. This is the same rationale which you use to pave my path to your own brand of enlightenment. But, in the end, I saw in you the exact same oppressors that you sought to destroy. You may call me a hypocrite for having altered my worship, but I still preach the same word of love and prosperity just as I did back then. Only in the name of gods I know for true watch over me. But you? Your arguments have run dry. Your scapegoats have withered away. Your secular galaxy cannot exist. 
and you will never be able to fulfill your godless ambitions. Damn, son. And how do I know this? Because I know I am right. And that is where I am drawing the line. The still miasma of incorrectness you are permeating is starting to manifest its own idiotic sentience. The game has changed since our previous discussion, and as much as you may believe you are in the right, you will be convinced otherwise sooner or later. All in all, nice discussion, heretic, <laughs> but it is time to stop. Oh, good. The H word. Being all ironic, are we? Yes. I had assumed your humor departed with your skin. Really sorry, my lord, but this very sensitive, divisive, and controversial discussion about Koas ideologies has caused a few civil wars <laughs> to crop up across Terra already, so perhaps we should distract our listeners by moving on and reading some questions sent in by them before more of them start in. Stabbing each other. <laughs> Actually, I think that might be the taco dilemma still going on. <laughs> no, 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 these are new, <sighs> unfortunately. Do not worry, we will quell the rebels in short time afterwards. We'll just tell them nicely to stop having opinions. <laughs> Fine. Read me some awful questions from our most painfully inept citizen. Can you send me home first? My congregation awaits me. Not. Absolutely not. Yes. You will suffer these questions as well for your crimes against humanity. Oh, for the love of chaos. <laughs> uh, now, now I suppose I understand why you were mispronouncing it. Go, start reading, before he fades out of this realm. <laughs> yeah. Questions and answer segment. Also, holy shit, is that a cat worshipper? What the fuck? <laughs> wow. Even the announcers are rude. Right, first question. Great and mighty Emperor, considering the fucked up nature of the galaxy right now, why don't you start making some Thunder Warriors to get everything sorted out for the moment? I mean, I know they were supposedly unstable and insane, like an army of teenagers, but they also don't live long, so maybe they can fuck some shit up that is fucking our shit up, and when they are dead, we can send some Astartes to fix everything up. I have heard that the Archmagos Belsarius Cowl has something awesome in his labs, but I have a feeling that his idea won't catch on and certainly isn't involved with any of your loyal sons. Kindest regards, sexual yeti, <laughs> porno slate artist. Look, individual whose name literally is sexual yet, there is a reason why the Thunder Warriors were taken out back and killed in glorious combat in the final battle of the Unification Wars. <laughs> yeah. You know, they were yes. only prototypes. They decomposed fairly quickly, yeah. got a star taze on the way, and, uh, you know. Yes. I wholly agree with the sentiment that they were like an army of insane teenagers. This man is quite enlightened for a <laughs> porno slave artist. You are only saying that because they threw you off a cliff and laughed at you. <laughs> you know, them throwing me off a cliff isn't exactly the first thing that comes to mind when I think about those mass murderers. Gajuare revelation. Besides, not even sure what you're talking about with this whole died in glorious combat thing. Last I heard, they were all put down like dogs by your... No! They all died in glorious combat on Mount Ararat. End of discussion. Stop! You know, I'm pretty sure there is no mountain going by that name. Well, this mm -hmm. segment's getting cut. <laughs> Perhaps we should consider cutting the entirety of Uriah's appearance out altogether. Perhaps we should consider cutting Uriah with a guardian spear. I'm incorporeal, you absolute... <laughs> Am I the only one curious as to what the pornography man meant by Archmagus Belisarius Carl having something awesome in his labs, <laughs> as if to imply that he is creating new Thunder Warriors? I do not care in the slightest. There are billions of tech priests across the Mechanicum committed to their own little tech heresies. They will never get their projects out there to aid the Imperium due to the restrictions put on them by their overseers and their culture. I am quite certain he, and every single other cog cock in the cult is just working at some hollow, futile endeavor that will not go anywhere, like making female thunder warriors, or reinventing the squads. <laughs> For some reason I recall Gilliman having mentioned this Magos by name in the past, but I am unsure as to the context of the conversation. Was it about reinventing squats? Because I told Gilliman that he was not allowed to do that. <laughs> What's a squat? Do not worry about it, boy. No need to depress you with such information. 
Okay, Lord Adorable, sir. <sighs> Excuse me, but could you please move on? I do not have all millennia. Very well. Here's the next question. Dear Emperor, what are your thoughts on the Volker Fenrika's oh, honorable oh. stance against the Inquisition oh. concerning oh. the citizens of the Imperium that nearly sparked a civil war? Sincerely, a loyal citizen. Oh, oh. Volker Fenrika! That's the Space Wolves. Good job. <laughs> the other attack plan strikes again with information absolutely no one of us knew. Uh, eggplant? Oh, yes, Revelation. What are your thoughts on the God Emperor's Holy Inquisition being stood up to by a pack of galactically misplaced Scandians? <laughs> if you had not noticed, Beelzebich, I despise the fact that some stupid dumb idiot decided to ironically name Malkador's organization, the Inquisition. Are you sure it wasn't you who named it? After all, your very existence demands seven layers of irony to even comprehend. He cannot be certain. My father's memory is fractured, so it is fully possible he could have named it himself and then forgotten about it. Shut your jaw or I will weld it shut. <laughs> if I may speak at the behest of our glorious overlord, of course he approved of it, priest! To make this entirely clear, what this citizen is referring to is the conflict that occurred in the aftermath of the First War of Armageddon, in which the Inquisition started to force the citizens of the planet into labor camps, sterilizing and purging them if the need became apparent, as well as conspiring to kill all the guardsmen who survived the conflict. This resulted in a cold war between the Inquisition and the Space Wolves, who took action in favor of freeing the Emperor's people and the soldiers of the Armageddon Steel Legion. Honestly, that's a pretty senseless reason to get into a war over. And why is that? I mean, who cares if the population of some planet gets treated ill after an attack by a force that is known to corrupt people against their will? Case in point, look at this emaciated pastor man! <laughs> oh, excuse you, nudist. I made the entirely conscious choice of denying your god and accepting my own. I was never corrupted, nor did I turn into some rabid beast that needs castrating. Damn it, now I'm conflicted. <laughs> what do you mean you're conflicted? You had good points! <laughs> Excuse me, but there is an entire separate record concerning the First War of Armageddon and the Cold War that followed. Perhaps we should cover that record in and of itself in a future Voxcast and continue this discussion then. An excellent set aside, it's tamed. <laughs> Go ahead with the next question. Mm. Yes, naturally. <clears throat> oh, glorious Emperor. I would like to inquire about the mysterious being that sometimes aids our efforts in bringing peace and prosperity to the whole Imperium. The Sanguinor. Be it your action, O oh mighty master of mankind, be it in any way related to your favorite son, Hawk Boy Sanguinius, blessed be his name. <laughs> I hope you get your eye patches soon. Eternally yours, Battle Brother Camellius, Blood Angel Second Company, Sixth Tactical Squad. Yeah. Blessed by who? Say, do we have any information on this sangui boy present? Oh, allow me just a second. I cannot wait for you to have two bionic eyes implanted, Father. It would look very funny. You are not allowed to laugh at all ever. I will laugh a lot, Father. <laughs> In my mind. I will turn all your body's dopamine supplies into pure mercury if you do. Uh -huh. Here we go. Page 51 of the 5th Blood Angels Codex. It is said that the Sanguinor only appears before the Blood Angels when circumstances are extremely dire. So dire, in fact, that only a few are actually recorded to have seen him in person. The only ones who are certain that the Sanguinor is no myth nor hallucination are those privileged Blood Angels that have access to the chapter's reclusium. Wow, we just keep leaking classified information about different <laughs> chapters, don't we? No one shall keep secrets from our Emperor! Shut up! I'm not talking about holding secrets from him. I am talking about openly discussing this kind of stuff in a boxcast public, eh? I do not believe this is classified information as much as it is history. No one bothered to confirm one way or the other. 
Uh, within the reclusium that I was just talking about, there is a single iron clasped volume recording every single account of the Sanguinos manifestations across the millennia. Manifestations is a strange choice of words. Almost as if this bargain bin Sanguinius is some sort of warp entity, huh? Taking into account how your soul seems to be all over the place, ever considered if you have your own little never-born offspring strutting around? Like this Sanguinor, perhaps? Even if I did, I would not be telling you about them, creep. I do not need you inviting my never kids to your extra mundane Sunday school. No, no, that's all right. I'm certain their father wouldn't even be there to pick them up afterwards, <laughs> seeing as how he's stuck at home being an armchair activist in the most literal sense of the word. Can I continue talking about the Sanguino now? Oh. No. <laughs> you really are there is whoop in his ass. Not let this crotty demon jealous here stop you. Like your grasp on this realm, your insults grow ever weaker. <laughs> the book goes on to say that determining the Sanguino's nature is just about as hard as his glistening armored abs. <laughs> Does it actually say that? <laughs> A couple of members in the Blood Angels chapter council theorized that the Sanguino is an amalgam of the Primarch's nobler side. The part that kept him from fully grasping his big... Black, quivering, murder boner. Gods, how impious. Yes, the horde illusions need to get thrown out the window. If only illusions could be thrown. Mm, it's a sanguinary guard. The Blood Angel's most elite veterans believe him to be one known as Ascalon, whom is the founder of their order. His body preserved by the powers of your grace, my king. His head ever encapsulated inside the golden death mask he has worn throughout the millennia. I will always take credit where credit is due and credit is always due to me for I am the reason you all live objectively incorrect. But I must say that it is well within reason for a space marine to survive for many millennia. As long as no major harm comes to their organs, and they liberally use their suspended animation membrane, they should be good. This is true. There is specific mention of a marine called Epimetheus within a record simply called Pandorax, whom survived in suspended animation for just around 10,000 years. Well, it is either that, or the mantle of the Sanguinor is simply passed down from marine to marine, and has been for 10,000 years. That would make even more sense. Don't you think? I believe him being a warp entity makes the most sense. You would, you insane pulpit ear. Besides the notion of him being a manifestation of Sanguinius's noble nature, the Blood Angels are known to be obsessed with their Primarch. And of course, your son Sanguinius is basically your very own Jesus. Oh, please. Uh. His very own what? His... Yes, this sounds like a... Uh, food? My glorious <laughs> golden hawk boy is not a Jesus. No, he absolutely is. He's like a brazen parallel to Jesus of the old religions. Everyone loves him. He has flowing, beautiful hair. He sacrificed himself. He has his own day dedicated Ooh. to him. He's nicer than his dad. Naturally, the warp working as it does, this Sanguinor would coalesce within the Empyrean and become its very own nascent entity, formed from the mass of worship of your son. If you are the father and Sanguinius is the son, then the Sanguinor is, perhaps, the Holy Ghost. What? Wow. <laughs> Please stop drawing connections to your old superstitious nonsense. It is worsening my eternal headache. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no! You do not get to use the word superstitious anymore, friend. That word has passed its expiration date by many millennia. Screw you. Expiration dates are guidelines, not rules. <laughs> Would this logically conclude that there is a warp ghost of me selling around the Immaterium? I, too, have a day. It is not as popular, but it exists. <laughs> Maybe? No. I would like to call it the Adorbador. Stop. <laughs> he comes to your hab blocks when you sleep and fixes your walls. Expected. <laughs> Next question. <clears throat> yes, of course. Yes. To the most illustrious emperor of mankind, my lord, I hope this missive finds you in tolerable health no. and happiness. It does not. 
I am a sanctioned Imperial Psyker, formerly of the Auto Hereticus branch of the Inquisition, based in the Calixus sector. Since your decree that the Inquisition be disbanded and all personnel return to civilian duties, I have been out of a job. I cannot return to my homeworld, Piety of Seth, which is currently being invaded by Xenos. I am struggling to find work on Scintilla, as the masses in general do not trust or like me, and the nobles and Adeptus Arbites are all corrupt and secretly in league with some kind of vile pain cult. I also have no experience working in a Factorum environment, and would be a constant health and safety risk to my fellow laborers. I humbly beg you, my lord, as the greatest and most perfect psyker in all of the galaxy, what advice can you provide to any and all itinerant Imperial psychers left wandering far from home, unemployed, or otherwise vulnerable to the mercies in a distrustful and hostile populace? What kind of work or career options would you recommend, and what role can psychers really play in the modern Imperium of Man? Yours in eternal service, Echelon Quilad. I do believe this man missed the memo I entrusted the Ecclesiarch to send out. That would be because of its origins. It takes a bit more time for information to reach in and out of the Calixus sector. Hmm. Let it be known. The Inquisition, which is real by the way to all civilians and guardsmen who were wondering, is not to be disbanded anymore. It was just a prank, at the expense of the most horrid authoritarian parts of the Inquisition, so I could have them banished to the war. Loyal subjects such as you, Aklan, are allowed to continue your work as long as you do not use your unquestioned watchdog dominion over the sector to murder babies or something. Unless they are traitorous babies. What? What do you mean, tra traitorous babies? <laughs> what does that mean? Can't have the next man skin grow up if we are fully capable of stopping it. I... What? Better to just make shiroobs out of them, honestly. Uh. What? A, a baby can't be a traitor. A baby is a baby! Oh, your outrage truly is rich, Padre, considering your ex-religion invented the concept of <gasps> original sin. What? Oh, <laughs> God, that's not similar in the least. You're all disgusting. <laughs> I question your judgment, Coas Man. I am certain your church is made out of dead babies. That's objectively <laughs> incorrect. That is rather impressive. <laughs> what? How did you build such a structure? My the foundation must have taken you months to construct. <laughs> no! <laughs> my church is not made out of dead babies. You know what? I'm going to continue on with the next question. Oh, the pain never ends. The pain never ends. <laughs> Dear Corpse Emperor, I know it is surprising for us can Coas Astartes to communicate with your Imperium in a non-violent ways, but I assure you I'm sending you this friendly little letter with no ill intention. You see, it happens that after our last successful revenge plot on the fluking furries on Fenris, our Primarch, Magnus the Red, had mysteriously vanished from his tower. During our victory party, no less. Imagine that. We didn't find his psychic trace anywhere on Sotarius, and our Corvidae seers caught divine his presence in the warp. Apparently, someone or something is blocking them. No clue, no lead, nothing. Besides, his disappearance can't be the result of one of the dark gods or filthy Xeno species. They would already boast about it. Which leaves you and your Imperium as the last suspect in this mess. Consequently, I am asking you this one question. Have you anything to do with the absence of our primogenitor? Because we are one of the few legions who managed to remain on good terms with our gene father, for the majority of us anyway, and we really miss him. Sincerely, Jehuti, Thousand Sun Sorceress. P.S. I enchanted this message so that any member of your cult who read it thinks it's a letter of praises to the God Emperor, and he should read it in order to bypass any potential filter and or censor. Don't blame them too much. Looks like the Administratum Spam Filter Divisio is getting promptly restaffed. This garbage being thrown straight in my face is inexcusable. <laughs> the sorcerer told you he enchanted the letter. One would have thought that a simple enchantment should have been noticed when sorting through mail intended for the Emperor of Mankind. <laughs> it could have been a mail to charge. It could have been Super Anthrax. In fact, we may be breathing in the Super Anthrax right now. Hey boy, are you dead? Uh, not yet, my lord. All right, Super Anthrax ruled out. How about answering the goddamn question instead of worrying about Super Anthrax? Right. Yes, I kidnapped Magnus. You did what? <laughs> you heard me right, face. I kidnapped Magnus. I had him brought here to my palace in a box to serve me once more. So, to the haughty pile of stale wizards he calls sons, you can either get going with your repentance post-haste or dissolve into nothing. Those are your choices. 
So could, could you could you could you run that one by me again? <laughs> I don't think like we can't just walk by what you just said as if it's not something that you just said. This is not something we can just ignore. I stab Vasinch in the face repeatedly as to reclaim Magnus's soul. He is loyal to my cause once more, nice. and you all can suck it long S and hard. Stabbed? Siege in the face? You can go on with the next question. I am done with this one. What? Certainly. Uh, alright. This one is a bit... I can barely see what it says, but let me try. Alright, alright. God <laughs> and poor... I draw a picture of Gork and Mork crumping to to prove the orcs is debt biggest and the strongest it it's I on the back strong me from who Ugok. What the fuck? And turning around, we can indeed <laughs> see a picture of two stick figures <laughs> with dubious looking <laughs> eyes and green skins chopping away at a pool of blood with a face. Your face, judging by the hair, sir. <laughs> I am offended. Why do you idiots keep letting messages from that f***ing Jameskins leak into my palace like a Sid Dick f***ing garbage water? J J J J J J E S S U S S f***ing cries get your shit straight you f***ing Whoops. Gods above, my presence in this round aches! Did I kill it? Did I really kill it? That is quite surprising. <laughs> Utter your favorite profanity to confirm this, my glorious overlord. No. <laughs> if it truly is true, I shall wait for the perfect moment to do it. I shall revel in the moment, feel the taste of freedom on my lips, and exercise the unshackled might of my vocabulary once more. Aw, oh, no more flues or flops. You better read the next question before I spend this moment lambasting you and your grisly leather slacks. I personally find my pants very fashionable, but nevertheless, here's the next question. <clears throat> emperor. Well, rude, no, my glorious emperor, or most splendid emperor, or extremely erogenous <clears throat> emperor. Good. You need some humility in your uh, on life. And you <laughs> need to wear something that is not a red spangled potato sack. I. <laughs> Having been one of the few among my sisters who survived the alcohol-induced coma from the news of your lack of divinity, I have a substantial amount of time to ponder over what answers I would request of you. I have come to one conclusion above all others. As you say, you're no god but a man, I will be blunt. I would have an answer to my question that has plagued my mind particularly for some time now. Surely, if you can share in the bad as well as the good, it would help us feel more connected to you on a real human level. You claim to be the product of a shortcut taken by ancient psychers to achieve the ultimate evolution of humanity. But does that not mean that at the end of the day you are still human? Should you not then feel the same guilt and doubt everyone feels? If so, I would know this. Have you ever had any serious doubts as to your goals and aspirations? Has anything ever made you reconsider any of your grand designs for the Imperium and humanity as a whole? Has anyone ever made you think twice? Is there anything that could or has made the greatest of our species think that perhaps our species is not worth saving to begin with? Cantus advanced Lucael of the Adeptus Auroritas. All right, first off, this girl has for some reason convinced herself that because I am no god, I am to be treated in an entirely different manner as if this illusion... That is exactly what you wanted though, is it not? That a god is greater than a man is a pre-manufactured assumption. To the ignorant, a god is greater, because the definition dictates it. To the enlightened, a god is a frail construct built on the foundation of our own morality. One easily toppled when we decide to resist it. Gods, you're so rational right now. Great job. <laughs> Secondly, I do not carry it out. However, the future may pave my path forward, be it in the ways I had envisioned, or in unfavorable turns. I always make the situation my own. The state of mankind as future is ever shifting. I just make sure it shifts in my favor. Yes, you're saying this 
But it's kind of hard to take you at your word, considering you've been stuck as a corpse on a throne for the better part of ten millennia. Who is to say that is not part of my plan? I sort of doubt that. Next question. Of course, sir. My might, Emperor. I am but a corpsman of Krieg, fitted for the grinder. But I must ask you, as I ride in the Panzer wagon, fitted for transportation, do you forgive Krieg? Do you forgive all our treachery all those years ago? We have thrown countless men, boys really, at traitors, Xenos, and the dreaded forces of Koas alike, seeking for forgiveness. So I, a lowly soldier, heading for his demise, ask you, do you forgive Krieg and all we have done for the Imperium so long ago? Number 8056, the western front of Normandia. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> that is probably the single greatest endorsement a planet has received since the heresy. I mean, here is the thing. I do not really know what you did, but if you remain loyal, you are forgiven. Just keep fighting the good fight, my man, and get yourself a real name while you are at it. What on Terra is a panzer wagon? Uh, now that is a food. <laughs> Awful, rationed, comes in a tin. Next question it is. Oh, damn it. How many are there? Do not worry. This is the last one. <laughs> to my manliest of men, Man Emperor. Tragedy has befallen our pitiful planet known as Nelson 420. <laughs> is it? Since your glorious words reached our Vox casters, seeking to settle the great taco debate yes. peacefully. Yes. A taco debate? <laughs> yes. What? We held a democratic vote, mandatory upon pain of death, of course, to determine which day would be deemed most worthy of occasions to eat such a sacred meal. Alas, what were once hushed heretical whispers of rebellion among our society have become open shouts of defiance, calling themselves La Campa de Taco. <laughs> These lunatics are led by she who calls herself Sister Beehive, what the as fuck? if to mock the very adeptus sororitas she pits herself against. They preach encouragements to indulge in that which we hold to be the foulest of taboos that the consumption of the sacred taco should be held on any day of one's choosing. Despite our attempts to combat this heretical revolution, I fear that our world may soon be beyond salvation. My only wish is for you and all of the Imperium to know of our plight, so the history need not repeat itself. Your most humble of servants, Lord Governor Casket of Case. Inexcusable. Unforgivable. Unjustifiable. Indefensible. Reprehensible. <laughs> Without justification. Absolutely disgusting. To eat the taco on a day of one's choice is to defile the sacred bond between you and the very modus operandi of the taco. <laughs> it is not you who gets to make the choice of when the taco is to be eaten. It is the taco that makes the choice. Exactly. The Cheddar Dips Creed clearly states that the taco, by its definition, defies consent of consumption outside of its designated taco day. Consensual consumption outside of the delegated time period is a myth. What are you talking about? Tacos? Non-consensual consumption? Wh what? <laughs> Last podcast, Lord Adorable and our Emperor started a civil war over what day tacos should be eaten. But tacos aren't even that good. Send him back to wherever he came from, Father. He is unwanted here, and he doesn't want to be here. Yes, this kind of great a sacrilege is not welcomed in my palace. Oh, finally! You better not fiddle with the altar boys, Preacho. Even if they are coaspons, would not want to decimate the remainders of your spit-roasted crotchicle. Brilliant rebuffle, Bone Boy. Push comes to shove, I know that I can always count on you to try and hamstring me with an accusation that I am a pederast. In the future, try cremation. It sure as hell beats shutting yourself up in a palace-sized coffin, listening to your own bones creak in agony. You glorified dog. God damn. Screw you, you right. Screw you, Revelation. He was brutal. He's brutal. <laughs> you know what? I really do want to ship it. No, you don't want to do that. Can I ship it? I don't think so, my lord. No, that is full bone heresy. Ha! <laughs> Use the age word, Mark II. Nevertheless, that was certainly dumb. But, come to think of it, you have my thanks for informing me about this incredible reservoir of sockery. 
If other records go into as much detail as the last church did, I could learn so much about the happenings of imperial history. Oh yes, absolutely, my emperor. We want more. We need more. These superb spurts of knowledge cascading upon the skin of our collective encephalons truly carries addictive quality. Uh. Shut your failure of a face, Sir Sinew. And that is our cue to end the Voxcast. I totally forgot we were broadcasting this. I feel like this may come to bite me in the ass in the future. A thank you to everyone listening. (laughs) Remember that no matter what, you make this Imperium. The Imperium does not make you. That is all. Uriah had pretty lousy arguments, yes? No one would ever consider joining his cause after hearing this, yes? It's all good. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, oh, you... (laughs) That is not an answer. (laughs) Anyway, uh, hope to see you all next time. Sweet. Have a good one and ampen a blast. (laughs) No. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So, that was the second podcast. I gotta say, that was a lot more entertaining than the first podcast for me. Oh my god, Uriah destroyed the Emperor. <laughs> the fucking heretic came in with some bombs, bro. Oh, I hope we see him again sometime or another. I hope we see him again soon. That was fucking excellent. In any case, thank you guys for joining me. It's like sitting down and do a full-length feature film. But I'm okay with that. You guys want to see it? I'm okay with that. I'll catch you guys next time. And hey, if I don't get to say uh, say hey tomorrow, if I don't have time or whatever, you guys have a Merry Christmas. Alright? And if you don't celebrate Christmas, well, have a wonderful sanguinea. uh, sanguinea. (sighs) God damn it. I got through this entire fucking video. The entire fucking video without stumbling over my words once. And then I tried to say Sanguinala. Bye. Ah!